Michael's Corner. Today we're making a buck saw, so stick around. In order to make this buck saw, you're going to need two uprights, a spacer bar or tensioning bar, a tensioning paddle, number 36 bank line, and a 21 inch saw blade. For today's period of instruction, we'll be using number 36 bank line, a 21 inch saw blade, and two key rings. All right, what I've done here is I've located a stick approximately an inch and a half to inch and three quarters in diameter, and roughly about six to seven foot in length. Now what I want to do is I want to start processing this thing down to the parts of my buck saw. If you notice right here, this is the perfect size for a tensioning paddle. I have a spacer bar or tensioning bar, and I have more than enough room left for two uprights. Knowing this saw blade is 21 inches in length, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it about an inch to an inch and a half longer on each side, and that should give me an upright about 24 inches in length. And I want to go ahead and cut two of those. I have both my uprights, so what I want to do is I want to get a measurement between them for my spacer bar or tensioning bar. To do this, I laid the saw blade on top of the uprights, and if you notice, the first hole is sticking out past on both sides. So now what I want to do is I want to look straight down and count my teeth. Looks about between the third and fourth, and the third and fourth on this side. So I'm going to use this measurement to cut my spacer bar or tensioning bar. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my tensioning paddle. I'm going to utilize this Y branch and I'm going to cut it off right here. What I want to do now is take my knife and go ahead and baton each one of these uprights down about an inch to an inch and a half. This creates a split so I can insert my saw blade. However, before I do that, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and lash each one of these uprights using six to eight foot of bank line. For your lashing, what you want to do is you want to take your bank line and take a bite and then place that tail about an inch to an inch and a half down from the end. Just like so. Then what you want to do, you hold it there with your thumb and you're going to wrap around this, pulling it tight every so many wraps. Just like so. And you're working your way towards the end of that loop. A tensioning tool or a Leatherman. When you go to tighten this, it makes it a lot tighter. about good enough. So what I want to do now is take this bank line on my tail and I want to feed it through that loop. Just like that. I'm going to grab my Leatherman, go to the opposite end. I'm going to grab this tail right here. I'm going to pull on it. What that does is it pulls that loop through it actually locks it inside underneath here.
just like that. And the excess, you can just trim it off. inside of them. This will lock the plate in place under tension. The spacer bar or tensioning bar is now tapered on both ends. What I want to do here is I want to go ahead and I want to carve some notches inside my uprights. So what I did is I went ahead and placed my blade inside my split ends and I did that to guarantee that the splits will be in line with each other and I know exactly where to carve those notches. saw is almost complete. I want to take my tensioning paddle and baton it in half and then drill a small hole at the top. What I've done here is I've taken about three feet of bank line and I folded it in half and I created a loop at one end. Then I pass that loop through my tensioning paddle. Now I'm going to grab the loop, bring it around, and pull the remainder of my line through. taking your saw blade and exercising extreme caution, simply rock that blade like so until you get it into position. In order to lock the blade in place, what I want to do is I want to push the uprights together as tight as I can get them. So to do that, I'm going to take my tensioning paddle and I'm going to twist it towards me. The more I twist it, the more tension is putting on my spacer bar or tensioning bar. It's locking everything in place. And there you go.
Welcome back. That was outstanding. There's a lot more moving parts on his buck saw versus a bow saw. However, the important part is exactly the same. Your baton splits must be in line with each other to keep that blade from twisting on itself. Hope you enjoyed this video. With that, catch you next time.